Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be demoing how we perform cord blood testing in the blood bank laboratory. Alrighty, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be demoing a cord blood ABRH and DAT test. So the first thing we need is actually a cord blood, and I do actually happen to have one here. It's labeled with the patient name and um, first and last name. So for this demo, it's going to be Lab Rat. Um, and so one thing to note about cord bloods is they're usually clotted, uh, so they're pretty gunky. Um, and so when you are taking the sample out, you want to make sure, one, that there's no clots up on the lids because it's going to make a gigantic mess. Um, and also, you don't want to acerate the clot because uh, that's going to be useless uh, for determining agglutination uh, in these tests. So you want to try to get the liquid portion of the blood um, out. So I have gone ahead and already made a 3% cell suspension on this particular patient. It's right here. So you can see it says lab rat and then it has red cell suspension on it. So I have made another video about how to make a proper 3 to 5% red cell suspension. Um, so I will go ahead and link that um, below this video in case you need to know how to do that. So I have this ready. Again, it's properly identified, and here's my cord blood. I'm gonna put this off to the side. So um, I also have a couple of tubes here. So these three tubes are labeled Lab Rat, Anti-A, Anti-B, and Anti-D. I'm gonna put them in order here, A, B, and D. And then I also have Lab Rat DAT and Lab Rat DAT QC. So if you notice here, I've only have we're doing ABRH, um, but I only have the front type here. So I only have anti-A, anti-B, and anti-D. I don't have a back type. So why, do I, why am I not doing a back type? And when I say back type, I'm talking about uh, testing the patient um, against A1 cells and B cells. And the reason for that is cord bloods are from newborn patients, and newborns have not developed antibodies to ABO antigens yet. So... Um, it takes a couple of months for them to develop. So if I were to be doing a back type in this particular case, it would be showing negative, which is technically incorrect. It would give you the wrong blood type. So that's why we only do front types or forward types on uh, core blood testing. So normally in a regular situation, um, meaning not core blood, so on regular patient blood, I would be adding the reagents first um, so I'd be adding anti-A, anti-B, anti-D, and then uh, the AHG reagent. However, there's something uh, different about core blood. And core blood contains Wharton's jelly. And Wharton's jelly is kind of this gelatinous substance that is present in the core blood that helps to kind of insulate and protect um, um, umbilical blood vessels. And so that warden's jelly can actually interfere with blood bank testing. So we have to wash these red cells. Um, and so I like to just, um, this is just how I personally do it. I like to actually distribute all of the red cells in these um, uh, into the tubes and then wash them versus just washing this. So what I'm gonna do is take my suspension of core blood and I'm going to distribute one drop of the red cells in each of these five tubes. All right, so then my next step is going to be washing these. So we gotta get rid of that Wharton's jelly. So um, you can use an automated cell washer um, so th these are instruments that you put the, the tubes in and tell it how many times you want to wash it and then you, it, it just automatically does it. Or you can do it manually, unfortunately, unfortunately it, for you if you have to do it manually, um, but manually washing. So if you do not know how to manually wash cells, um, go ahead and watch um, one of my other videos about how to uh, manually wash them. I can link that below as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wash these four times to get rid of that Wharton's jelly. And then after that, I will return. All right, so I'm going to go wash them. Okay, so I've returned. So all of these tubes have been washed four times. Um, unfortunately, I did it manually. Um, great fun. Um, so now what um, is next is we're actually going to do the testing, so adding in the reagent. So the first reagent I'm going to grab is anti-A. So this is anti-A anisera, and I'm going to be pushing, putting one drop of it in the anti-A tube. 
and then put it back in the rack here. And then I'm going to take anti B and put that in my anti B tube. Perfect. And then next, I'm going to do my anti D. Putting that in my anti D tube. And then the next tube is my DAT tube. So I'm going to get a, a monoclonal um, anti-IgG, so an AHG, which is anti-human globulin. I'm going to put two drops in there. Then I'm not going to put anything in here. Um, it's just saline and um, a little bit of saline that's left over from the wash and then uh, the red cells. And then what I'm going to do is spin all of these for 15 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and get and do that. And then I'm going to get my result sheet here and we'll be back here in just a moment. Okay, so I have returned. And um, so what I've done here is taken all of our tubes and spun them for 15 seconds in the centrifuge. And now I'm going to go ahead and start reading them. Let me turn my light here. I've got my result sheet. And actually what I need to do first is take my patient tube and document my patient name. So it's lab rat. And the date is uh, December 8th of 2022. Alrighty. So hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Put my sample away. All right. So the first one I now I want to do these one at a time. You never want to do duplicates. So I'm going to take anti A first. And I'm going to shake it down. That is a beautiful four, point, four plus reaction. You see that just big one agglutinate there that's hanging out? Beautiful four plus, so anti-A. And I'm going to immediately record that. So in my anti-A section, I'm gonna put a four plus. Excellent. Now I'm gonna take my anti-B tube. And, oh, this is probably gonna be negative. I can tell the way it's coming off that cell button, but let's completely get rid of that cell button first before we call it. Excellent. So there's no agglutination whatsoever. So anti B is going to be zero. So I'm going to record that. Anti B. So this person I could already tell is an A patient. And the reason for that is we've determined from this reaction, uh, this reaction here, that the patient has an A antigen present on the red blood cells. And also there is no B antigen present on the red blood cells. So this patient is an A. Now let's figure out their RH status. We can do that by looking at our anti-D. So let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful clump there. Alrighty. So we're going to let that one is four plus as well. So this patient is A positive. All right, now let's take a look at their DAT. Okay, that looks negative. So I'm going to put an, a negative for their initial DAT. And then we also need to um, leave this DAT sit for five minutes and then respin it again. Um, and let's look at our QC here. So this is just making sure that the patient is just not clotting spontaneously. Okay, that looks good. All right, so let's set this DAT tube for five minutes. And then after the end of the five minute period, I'm going to go ahead and centrifuge it for 15 seconds and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so what I've done is let this tube sit another five minutes at room temperature and spun it down again for 15 seconds. And I'm gonna take a look. Oh yeah, that's still definitely negative. That's a good thing for the baby. That means they do not have hemolytic disease of the newborn because their DAT is negative. We can't say that definitively yet until we do what? So we have to add check cells to it, just this is reagent. So again, Always, when you're using red cell reagent, make sure that you get all that red cell off the bottom, off the vial. Okay, so check cells are IgG-coated red blood cells that are going to cause a positive reaction in any AHG. So I'm going to put one drop in our negative DAT. Going to mix it up 
and then I'm going to spin it for 15 seconds. And honestly, I'm just going to wait because why not? We'll wait for 15 seconds. So, so far, so good for this baby. They're A positive and it's looking like their DAT is going to be negative. Oops, and I forgot to put negative there for that five minutes. Shame on me. Should make sure to always result these um, immediately. So we're just waiting for our last one, which is our check cells. And they should be positive. Lately, they've been, they've been very, very faint, very weak positives, one pluses. So we'll see what this one looks like. Alrighty, it's dinged, so that means we are done. Alrighty. Let's take a look at our check cell. Oh yeah, that's very faint, but there's definitely very tiny agglutinations. I found on these videos it's very hard to see one pluses. You have to look very closely sometimes with um, check cells. Yeah, that's a very, that's a very, very light one plus. Alrighty. So I'm going to put a check mark in our check cells. So this patient would be resulted out as A positive and their DAT would be negative. Alrighty. So that's the end of our cord blood demo. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel for more educational laboratory content. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments section. Or if you have any other suggestions or questions about other topics, uh, please feel free to um, comment as well. Alrighty, until next time.